Everybody, episode five, Cinco. Dean Logan. Dean uh, is the owner of CRS Roofing in Dumont and the owner of LaborSync in Dumont. He is one of my very best friends in the entire world. And I can say that with a straight face because Dean and I almost go back all the way to high school. Uh, Dean missed me by a year, but we had this magical um, joint family friend. So my friend, Kathy, Kath, if you're out there, thanks for all the pool parties back in the day. Nick, thanks for hosting all the pool parties back in the day. See, back in the day when we were in the seventh and eighth grade, and Dean was in college, or maybe, I don't know, maybe a little bit older, maybe right around that age. These guys used to torture us by throwing us in the pool. I used to hang sideways by metal fences, trying to hold on for dear life. He was, he was, the, he was the best terrorist I ever knew. So, <laughs> Dean? What an introduction. Yeah, what an intro. But honestly, um, Dean is one of the greatest people that I know. Uh, he's been a really awesome friend of mine for um, for a, a long time now, probably close to the beginning of DSM. Um, Dean, welcome to Homage. You are episode five today. Um, give us a little bit of background about who you are, kind of how CRS started. One of the really awesome things about, about CRS and the way Dean kind of handles his business in general is that um, CRS is a residential and a commercial roofing company, um, but it's multi-generational. And it's one of those things, Dean's dad, Al, Big Al, down in Florida today, enjoying the sunny weather. It's sunny here, but it's about 50 degrees colder than where you are. Yeah. Al, actually, Dean, before you get started, Al is one of the few human beings, one that is older than me that I'm still afraid of, and because he's in such great shape, and two, holds the distinct honor of two hole-in-ones. Same, of course, same hole. Same hole, Hackensack Country Club. Yeah. Two hole-in-ones, same course, same hole. So Big Al, if you're out there thinking about you today, hopefully you're sitting on a beach doing something way better than Dean and I are doing, sitting in two feet of snow over here. So Dean, tell us about CRS. Tell us a little bit about your journey and thank you for coming on here today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. My father started CRS in 1977. He was in the industry forever. Neighbor was in the roofing industry. So he quickly got him involved on the manufacturing side. And in 77, he decided to start his own business right at the perfect time. I'm just five years old at the time. It was a perfect time to quit your job and start a new business. <laughs> so that's about right. Yeah, after doing that, he ran a successful business and he quickly morphed from a residential company to a commercial company and grew from there. I came on board right out of college. So I guess that's about 26 years now that I've been doing this full time. When I came on board, first thing he did was throw me right on the roof. It was the greatest lesson. And I knew it at the time, but I truly can appreciate it now. I worked on the roof. I was cleaning garbage in a dumpster. I did the worst jobs that a roofer could do. And I did it for three years. And that taught me a lot of things about me, about the company, the, the industry that we're in. And then at the same time now, in retrospect, I gained a lot of respect over the years from the people that to this day still work in this company that was swinging an ax next to me. They know that I know how it gets done. I know what it takes. I'm not afraid of hard work. So it was great to be able to follow that path to today where we run a really nice commercial industrial roofing company, um, residential roofing siding, windows, everything on the outside, uh, a power washing division, a service and maintenance division for a commercial division. I mean, it's grown into a, a pretty amazing company, but it all started you know, back in 77, when we just got that ball rolling. And since then, we've been able to really grow it. And, and let's put that timeline for, for the audience out there. Let's just put the timeline into like a little um, snapshot right now. I'm assuming you said you started that when you finished college. Yep. So your dad threw you up on a roof in the middle of July. Uh, actually, 
August to be exact. Okay. That, if, makes a, a, that makes a huge difference. So it was 15 degrees hotter than what I originally thought of. Yeah, and let's just say this is getting a little too roofing specific, but he had me on a job in Munaki where it was, the material was coal tar pitch. Coal tar pitch is, well, put it this way, it's banned today. <laughs> you can't do it, you can't use it. Way to go, Al. Yeah. You, I couldn't figure out why after the first day I couldn't open my eyes. Pitch, you get what's called pitch burn and it actually burns your face, burns your skin, swells your eyes shut. And that's what I did. It was about 180,000 square foot tear off. And I did that for my first three or four months working in that company in the dumpster, ripping all of this with pitch. So it was a great introduction to the roofing industry. So, Thanks. so hard work was never, um, it's actually one of the things I most admire. There, there's a few things within this conversation that we'll talk about, but Dean, um, as I've gone through DSM, Dean's, like I said, he's kind of been there through the journey um, and, you know, has started another company that is now doing well and, and has evolved out of the roofing business, which was extremely smart to do, which actually helped his, his labor force and helped streamline that process. But um, I think one of the things that I most admire about you is your dedication to one, your craft um to be able to do something that long like i've been you know in a few days february 7th it'll be 14 years for dsm wow. and it feels like some days it's like 80 years that i've been doing this it, you know so to do it for 26 years like basically double what i've done um so your dedication to your craft but also the hard work like there's no um for, for all those out there that don't know dean personally um there's not a day if I call, he doesn't pick up the phone or if he's on a roof, doesn't call me right back. Um, just it is always there as a friend. Um, you know, we've gotten now to be um, golfing buddies, stinking of courses all over Northern New Jersey, um, right. more me than Dean, um, but we have our fair share of hacking up courses. Um, but it's, it's, it's a dedication to the craft it's the hard work, the lessons that Al taught you. Um, one thing especially that's intriguing that I think would be really cool for the audience to hear um, is the other company that Dean is, is an owner of, uh, LaborSync, and how that kind of spun off. So an evolution from one business that you know has been around for, for 43 years um, to a more technological driven and Dean's sort of foresight into the industry to see where technology was taking it and how it could help his business and not just be a part of it, not just go and find a product that could help him, but actually find a partner and build that business from the ground up. So tell us a little bit about that because you could have just stuck with roofing and been like, yeah, this is, this is it. And this yep. is what I'm going to do, but tell yep. us a little bit about labor sync and that evolution from CRS and how labor sync has now taken off. I think it does go back to my father again, because it starts with how he approached the roofing industry. He never wanted to be on a level playing field. He always wanted to be one step ahead of everybody else. So when there were newer products, newer technologies, newer pieces of equipment, we had them. It always put us above somebody else. If everybody was selling, you know, these widgets for, three dollars he found the best version tomorrow's version of that widget and it didn't matter that it was five dollars it was his job to educate the customer and sell him for that so that mentality carried across and in 2008 when the economy really started to take a turn i was sitting down with my father and we're just talking about what are we going to do you know here we go again this wasn't his first recession it was my first big turn into one um we were talking about you can only fire so many people and sell so many trucks you still have to run a business so where can we tighten up costs where can we really watch our dollars and and basically buckle down for this next term and we thought about our labor at that point we were tracking our time through paper timesheets. i grabbed a bunch of timesheets. i pulled a few months every single one 
the ones that were complete all said seven to three thirty every single day. I'm like, God, there's so many discrepancies here. Labor is so expensive for us. I bet you we could save a lot of money here. At that time, a kid was operating as a, it was a tech guy. He was on retainer, Joe Berger for us to handle our network. And we were having a conversation. It was like a Friday afternoon at five o'clock. We were just talking about it. And he said, you know, I could probably build something. And we spent a little bit of time, maybe three or four months. He actually, right then and there, built a biometric time clock, built from scratch, way beyond, another person, way beyond technology that is what it is today. Um, from that, we doubled back. We actually started to plan on building out an application because the iPhone just launched. It was BlackBerry prior to that, but iPhone just came out. We said, you know what? We can use the mobile app platform. So we started to develop an app on that platform and we beta tested it in the roofing business. It was a great way for our guys to clock in and clock out on a phone. We knew where they were. We knew what they were doing, how long they were there. It was great. Quickly, we realized it was, a, it was bigger than us. And it was something that if we built it, not for CRS, but just in general, that we could sell it to anybody who has a mobile workforce. So we did that. We really took the general approach of solving everybody's problem, not just ours. We created our own business in 2009. And in 2011, we started selling LaborSync. We were open globally, but we started selling it to anybody that we knew. And we, we took off pretty quickly in the beginning. And then we had to work at growing it from there. But some of the great stories that we tell all the time with the clocking in and clocking out, when we first introduced this in the roofing business, we put guys, we had guys on a crew in Pennsylvania on a, on a big project. And the guys were staying in a hotel like a mile down the road. We said, all right, guys, listen, when you get to the job site, open up the application and clock in. Each one of you do that. Okay, boss, no problem, no problem. So the next morning, Al, myself, Joe, Jenna, we're all around the computer and we can't wait to see these guys. They're clocking in. So we're getting, boom, seven o'clock, clock in, 7.01. So we're getting clocking, but we're getting random addresses. We pull it up on a map and we can watch them clocking in from the hotel to the job site in the truck. You could see the route, it's one mile down the road. They're clocking in on the jobs, on the route to the job site. I call up the foreman, I'm like, what are you doing? I told you to clock in when you get to the job. Yeah, boss, we did. I can see you clocking in on the way to the job. No, 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 we all clock in on the job. Okay, fine, whatever, I let it go. The next day, same thing goes. We log in in the morning, we watch the guys clock in, 15 clock ins on the corner of the roof. Problem solved. That time that I was losing from the hotel to the job site, from the office to the work site, whatever it is, all of that, all those inconsistencies and all of that time lost in the first year that we tracked it was $104,000. That's a story we tell everybody. We have a calculator on our website for that. You are bleeding money in innocent time theft. People don't realize they're taking five minutes, 15 minutes. It's innocent. You clocked in at 7.15, but yeah, seven o'clock. That's what I write. You didn't mean to steal 15 minutes from me, but you did. And 15 minutes over 40 people over a year is a lot of money. Yeah, compound so, interest. That's crazy. It's crazy. The, so um, that was the creation of that. Yeah, like the evolution of that product, though, just to be able to do that. And now, you know, here we are, you know, whatever it is, for 13 years later, like 12 years later to say like, labor sync it how many countries is it in now how many languages so we're in 17 languages and just over 100 countries yeah like which all started from sitting in a room with a sitting contractor room. right sitting in that room with a contractor being like how do we evolve out of crisis yep um that's 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 an amazing part of like that's an amazing part of like being like the person to be able, we've had many, many conversations over the, the course of, I would, you know, really interesting ones, I would say over the last three years, but really um, over the last like five to six years, I don't know how long, you know, CRS has been our client, um, but to see the way Dean handles himself for me being five years younger, you know, whatever it is, four or five years younger, um, has been exemplary and to see again to see al in the early meetings of crs when we were working together um you know 
at the time, I don't know how old he was, probably in his early 60s or whatever. And 77 now. All right. So even older, a little bit older. So in his like, you know, early 70s to be sitting there in a room and just be at attention because you're like, this dude's on the ball. <laughs> like, that dedication to craft is something that has meant a lot to me, has meant a lot in our conversations. Um, just to be able to, you know, have a platform like this to be able to, to speak to that. Like Dean and I have worked together for a long time. Um, now, you know, families get together and um, it, it's that element of, of a person when you, when you find somebody, to those that are out there in the audience, um, I think one big takeaway from this homage that I really want people to understand is the fact that when you're in business or you're on this journey, there are people, and, and Dean might laugh at what I'm gonna say next, but as you, as you begin to broaden the base of your business and grow, the inner circle becomes smaller and smaller because the forces of nature that go along with building a business, it's almost like the more successful you become or the bigger it is and the more people that are involved, um, it, it just, you, tight, you end up tightening up your circle and you find those people that share the same values, share the same um, beliefs, um, are, are not only good friends, but just good people in general, um, to be able to have that, um, is, is rare, you know, and in a business like Dean runs, you know, um, well, you know, let's call CRS what it is. It's, it's, it's a tough business. You know, there's a lot of competition. It's a brutal business. You know, we've had a lot of conversations over the last few years about, you know, employing people in, in the trades and, and how hard it is. And, you know, as the economy is changing in COVID, I mean, Dean's had to, you know, 2020, you had to be a chameleon um, with regards to, you know, jobs coming, jobs going, when is it going to start? We can't have people all together. You know, I, I guess on a, there's seasonality built into your business already, but then throw on top of it a global pandemic and it probably made it really, really difficult. Yeah, let's just say 2020 was an inter in very interesting year, to say the least. But um, yeah, just in short, um, really dedicate, dedicate this episode to um, the fact that nothing will, nothing, nothing can take away from hard work, especially, you know, in a family business, family business is tough enough um, to, to run and multi-generational. It's, it's, it's difficult, but if you put in the hard work, you're, you have like Al did and like Dean continues to do the foresight to look ahead to be to trying to put not only the best product out there, but to stay on top of, I, I can tell you just from our work with CRS on the roofing side, how much you put into the relationships with your vendors, with product, making sure, you know, Dean's done work at our house. Um, you know, the product is always awesome. Um, so uh, a quality and a dedication to craft, hard work, perseverance, having the foresight, um, these are all things that I greatly admire in you. Um, and, you know, just thank you for, for being a good friend. Um, you've been a, a very trusted person in my inner circle, both from a business standpoint to bounce ideas off of, and as a friend. Um, you know, like I said, I, I consider you one of the best. You're one of the best. There, there's no, there's nothing else to say. Um, and Gina, I didn't get paid to say that. I'm saying that <laughs> on my own. Um, so thank you for being you um, and just for sharing in my journey. Um, you've given me a lot uh, of critical insight. You've given me an eye um, and you've been a loyal friend. So I appreciate that very much. And I just wanted to say thank you and, and thanks for coming on today. I really appreciate it. Uh, your friendship is greatly appreciated. As far as I'm concerned, I'm blessed to have you and your family in my life. Uh, it, it's very reciprocal and, and we're very blessed too. Um, 
Go ahead. Any last parting words that you want to share in, in your journey, in your 26 year journey in business, leave the audience with what you feel has helped you in many a situation. Go ahead. I really think I can summarize it very easily because of the team that I've built now here beneath me, it's lead by example. It is clearly lead by example. They have seen me to this day, to today, out in the yard cleaning up garbage. It doesn't matter, it has to get done. Nobody is too proud to do whatever job it is. So we all are here in this business, trying and reaching for that same goal. So answer the phones, clean up garbage, help a guy out, whatever it is. It doesn't matter what your title is. It doesn't matter what it says on the outside of your door. Just do the right thing and lead by example. Get it done. Get it done. Yep. Get it done. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, episode five is in the books. Uh, Dean Logan, thank you very much for coming on. Appreciate your friendship. Appreciate all you mean to a lot of people uh, around here. Um, and uh, continued success with both CRS and LaborSync. And uh, audience, take heed. Listen to the advice. Mr. Logan, when he speaks, he means it. Do the work, put in the work, put in the hard work and don't skimp. And everything might not go perfectly, but you'll, you'll build a really good business, one that will endure for close to 44 years and labor sync for 14. So Dean, thank you very much. Congrats on all the success, pal. We'll talk soon. Sure.